right before lunch. <laughs> Everywhere I speak, I'm right before lunch. Um, so I'm really excited to talk to you today, a little bit, give a little bit of information about what we've been doing in um, associated with pesticide uh, concentrations and pesticide use and um, water quality in Bertrand Creek. So a little bit about our program. WSD's monitoring program originally started in 2003 and it was a partnership between our agency and Department of Ecology. It still is a partnership. Um, we do the, the field related work for that project now and, and the method development and then we contract all of our work through the Manchester Environmental Lab at Ecology um, and do a lot of great work there. Um, currently we sample in one urban and five agricultural watersheds at 14 monitoring sites, seven east, seven west. Um, and we sample weekly for 27 weeks a year, so the, the growing season. We sample from the first or second week of March through the first or second week of September, and we're looking for 200 plus current use pesticides, legacy chemicals that are always found, and some of their breakdown products or degradates. So why Bertrand Creek? So we've had a program that started in Yakima and Seattle, so we had ag and urban, and over time, grower communities like the tree fruit guys up in Wenatchee came to us and asked to be part of the program, so we added that to the project. Uh, we added for a while, we sampled in uh, West Seattle for more urban sites. The growers in Skagit County came to us and talked to us. And then in 2012, I, I gathered pesticide use data from commodities around the state. And in 2012, I sat down with some of our project staff and said, if we were going to expand, what are we kind of missing in cropping patterns? And berry agriculture was one that we were missing. And, and I felt like it was a really good place for us to get started because at that time, spotted wind drosophila was an emerging pest problem up here. And so pest, pesticide use practices were changing. Um, and we wanted to try to track some of that and see what was happening in the water as a result. So um, we researched a ton of systems up here and eventually decided um, on Bertrand Creek and that watershed. And uh, then we worked with the Red Raspberry Producers and the Red Raspberry Commission to, to refine what our monitoring goals were. The outcome of that was that in 2013, we added Bertrand Creek to our ambient water monitoring program. And in this situation, we added sites because as you've heard and everyone here knows, 50% um, of the watersheds in Canada, 50% of the watershed is down here. The growers were really wanting us to be able to discern between their impacts on the watershed and the Canadian uses and what the differences were there. So we were asked to add a site um, right here up on H Street, so really close to the border. We don't have any berry agriculture. There's a little bit of pasture ground right above this, but there's nothing really else existing there. And then a site that captures what's happening in that area here, which is about 60% of that part of the watershed is either in seed potato or um, red raspberry. And so then we monitor here, and then we monitor it at the same site Ecology has gauging stations at, um, on Rathbone. And so as with our regular monitoring program, we're up here 27 weeks per year at both locations. Um, and, and having that data from the two sites allows us to identify Washington specific uses. It also allows us to identify Washington specific problems. And if there's areas where the growers are, um, need help in refining how they use a pesticide so that we don't have water quality impacts, we'll, we'll be able to discern what's theirs and what's not. So we have two years of data I'm going to present to you today. This is hard to read because there is a lot. So surprisingly, or not surprisingly, Bertrand Creek, both sites are two of our most prolific pesticide locations. So they match up pretty well with our Yakima drainage sites uh, for irrigated agriculture. Um, not quite as many hits, but on average, we get somewhere between seven and 12 um, per week, different pesticides. And anytime you see a, a gray, that means there's no criteria to measure against. If you see a green, it means that we found it, we detected it, but it was below any level of concern. So this doesn't address mixtures, which we're doing work on that now, but it does show you that you know, at any given moment in time, we have herbicides that may be related to ag use or county road uses. Uh, obviously, phosphate is a fungicide. That's part of the, um, the combo pristine. It's pretty heavily used in berries. Um, lots of herbicides. Herbicides are really water soluble, so we find those a lot. Uh, Malooxone is the breakdown product for malathion, which is an insecticide that they're using for spotted wing drosophila control. Um, Oxymil is one that they use. This is when they rehab fields. It's, a, it's for controlling nematodes. 
So when they go in and they turn over a field and they're going to plant raspberries back in seven years or so after those raspberries, have, they, stop becoming, they stop being productive after seven years. They go and they rip every single thing out and they start from scratch. And when they do that, they often have to treat the soil for nematodes. Um, and so that's, that's one of those things. We, we are investigating, we believe, you'll see on the lower Bertrand numbers, we believe that the oxymal detections may very well be a groundwater recharge of the creek. Um, because on the next one you'll see we find it every single week of the year and they're not using it. <laughs> Except for in the winter when they're rehabbing fields. So for us to find it all that time, there's no way that it's just a current use. Um, and then again, lots of, lots of the herbicides. But um, this was you know, in May of 2013, the last week of May 2013, we, got, um, we had 12 different things in that sample. And then at the lower site, we also had a ton of different things detected in those samples. So a lot of you know, 2,4-D, at this site we had eight things. So that means there were four things on the previous list, on the previous slide, that we found coming in from Canada that were no longer being detected in the water system by the time we got down to Rathbone. Nobody in, on the Washington side was using those things. They weren't increasing in concentration. They disappeared out of our sampling in that site. Um, and here's what that looks like. So anything that's in green on here, these are Canadian influence detections. So these are samples that came in and they, they, they originated in Canada and they may have only been from the Canadian side. Um, we had some things that were being added on the Washington side. So where we would detect diuron coming in on the Canadian side, we then had more of it downstream on the Washington side. So it's obviously Washington used as well. The same with aminocloprid and maloxone are both being used for spotted wing drosophila control. Since we added aminocloprid to the monitoring program, I look back at the data and since, I want to say in 12 years for malafine, we've had like 25 detections statewide. For six years for aminocloprid, we've had 300 detections. It is the most used insecticide both in ag and urban environments now, and so we find it everywhere. Um, and it's also a pollinator concern. So. That's one of those that we watch pretty closely. Um, the metal axyl is a fungicide. Um, uh, Nepropamide is, uh, is a fungicide and oxymel, like I talked about, is, is for using, uh, is for controlling um, nematodes. So you can see there's some stuff that's being added on the Washington side. Uh, this is a wood preservative. That's usually old wood um, that's still leaching. Um, this is captan, it's another fungicide that we see. This is a berry use, pretty heavy berry use. Um, and 2013 was a relatively wet spring. So we saw a lot more fungicide use in 2013 because it was a wet spring. Certainly more than we'll see in 2015. <laughs> we won't see a lot of fungicide use in 2015 data when that comes out. So this was the 2014 data. You'll notice the colors changed, I'm just gonna warn you. So what used to be always green, yellow, and red in our system is now all shades of colors. <laughs> Um, we added a bunch of new criteria starting in the 2014 data where our, we're measuring against like plant toxicity numbers now, which we didn't used to do. We're measuring against some more sensitive inver invertebrates than we used to. So it gives us an opportunity to kind of really discern what are the species that would be most impacted by pesticide concentrations. And, and blank is a non-detect. So. Blank is a non-detect. And gray means there's nothing criteria-wise. So for instance, like oxymeloxine is a degradate. It's a breakdown of oxymel. There's no, there's no criteria to measure it against, so it's a gray. Um, the same with captan, or this is the degradate of captan. It, there's nothing to measure it against. So in some cases, degradates are toxic on their own. And they've got their own number to measure against. But in, this, in those two situations, we don't. And so yeah, we have lots of blanks. If they're listed here, we found them at least once. So you know a pretty good a pretty good listing of stuff that we found at least once. Um, you know uh, the last week of May seems to be a popular one up here where we either get a rain event or there's just a lot of there's been a lot of good weather. We get a lot of growth at that point, and so we see a lot of different uses. Um, and a lot of these are things that you might see in eggs. Some of them are things you might see in um, kind of urban or rural homeowner uses. Um, some of them are things that you might see being used by the public entities for noxious weed control or for roadside spraying. So part of our goal every year and once every three years is to go through and really analyze where do we think these uses are. And if we think they're becoming a problem, if there's something that we hardly ever detected and now we detect it every week of the year, who do we need to talk to to try to figure out what's going on with that use? Is there a problem that needs to be addressed? 
like I said, we're lucky. None of these exceed any criteria, but that doesn't mean that's not the end of the story. Because while on their own they don't, when you find 13 things in one sample, we don't really know what that means for, for screen health. We don't know if those things combined together create a toxic soup that could be a part of the problem. So that's part of where I would say in the pesticide research world, we're kind of at our infancy. We're still learning to crawl, not even ready to walk yet on mixtures and how mixtures play out um, in, in toxic, toxic events. In Lower Bertrand Creek, um, that same week of the year, we had uh, one less chemical detected. Uh, we also had kind of a different makeup of chemicals. So, you know, again, we get some insecticides, we get some fungicides. We've just started adding fungicides to our program. <coughs> they used to be really hard for us to detect um, but, um, and for the, for the lab to analyze for. Um, but we're working pretty closely with the lab to add as many as we can in because it's a, it's a facet that we were just missing in our data. Again, you can see there are a couple things. It, it changed from 2013 to 2014. We had a, less things that were kind of the leaders of, of the downstream detections coming in from Canada. Um, and then downstream, we had a lot more stuff detected um, than we did upstream. And these blue ones here, these are things that were only detected on the Washington side. So these are, we've got some herbicides and we've got some insecticides that have come onto the, into the system that we're just starting to look for now. And then, as I said before, we have some things that they're using on both sides of the border. Berries, berries on the BC side are not dissimilar to berries on the, the Washington side. We also have a lot of cross-border growers. So if they use it on their farm up there, they're going to use it on their farm down here, uh, just with a Washington or US label versus a Canadian label. So we're sampling 2015 and beyond. We've talked to the growers about it. They're really excited about the data that's coming out of this. It shows really good things. Um, it shows that the growers are being really good stewards. We're not seeing a lot. We've never, we've never had an exceedance of a criteria here um, in the first two years of the program. Um, and, and we're excited about the data that's coming because it shows that the, the red raspberry growers in this basin and that the buffers in this system are doing a really good job of keeping pesticides either out of the stream or at low levels. Um, and the, the other things that I wanted to mention, so we're hoping to continue this work. We've, we've made it part of our work plan, so we're hoping to continue the sample up here. Um, you know, we're going on, we're in our 13th year in Yakima. We'd like to be able to talk about this in, in 10 years and say we're in our 13th year in uh, Whatcom County. So um, we did add some things this year that are new for us. So we did a sediment sampling pilot project where we're looking for about 125 pesticides in sediment. A lot of the pesticides that are used in, in uh, berry agriculture and in most ag are things that you're not going to find in the water, but we might find them in the sediment. And that's an issue for invertebrates, potentially. So we did five locations. One site that we have, the one on Rathbone up here, is one of those sites. And then we have a site in um, our Seattle site, and then one in Skagit, and then two on the east side. And so those were sampled in April. They're going to be sampled the first week of July. They're going to be back out in September, in end of September to hopefully, if we get a rain event, we'll sample after that rain event happens. Um, and then um, this is one that has always come up. So glyphosate is the most used herbicide in the world. Um, our program has never included glyphosate, uh, which is the active ingredient in Roundup. Um, and uh, we worked with the lab really closely this winter to develop a method to test for this in water. And we're really excited about it. Uh, so what we did this year was starting the second week of April, we sampled at all of our sites, 14 sites statewide, for five weeks. All of those sites got a glyphosate sample taken. And we were st starting to get results back and we're getting hits. We would expect, it being the most used herbicide site in the world, that we would find it. Um, the numbers look pretty low right now. Unfortunately, as everyone is well aware, our spring started extremely early. It never really, fall never really ended, and it went right into spring. And so based on when the met method was ready and when we started sampling, we probably missed a good three weeks of really strong herbicide use at the beginning of that sample period, uh, where our method just wasn't ready. So we're talking about what does that mean? Should we go back out and do this again? It's not meant to be an every year thing, but uh, we were very interested in getting some data and with all of the things going on related to habitat loss for monarch butterflies related to glyphosate in the Midwest and things like that, we felt it was really important for us to get some good data on what's happening out here. Um, I do, yeah, I do want to mention really quickly, we have another project that's kind of hot and heavy that's happening up here in Whatcom County. We're working in fish trap four mile, 10 mile um, 
the four mile, 10 mile systems at fish trap watersheds this year with the red raspberry and the blueberry commissions and the blueberry growers ended up being our main, main target on this. So we'll get streamside vegetation and its effect in reducing drift into waters, um, nearby waters. And so this is based on aerial applications with helicopters. So I have a bunch of staff up here right now uh, out in the blueberry field setting up transects because we're going to be sampling um, first thing. So I just wanted to make people aware of it. You might see us out. So we're going to be looking at sites like this where we've got hedgerows adjacent to blueberry fields. They're spraying by air. We're sampling to see what's happening in the water column there. Um, and WSU's partnered with us. They're going to do some, some other stuff out there at the same time. So, um, but yeah, a lot of work up here. And we're really excited about the partnerships we've created and, and the opportunity to provide a, a new data set um, to this watershed. And this is just contact information for myself and others within the program.